City Commission meeting for March the 11th will come to order. Roll call, City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham? Here. Commissioner Galt? Here. Commissioner Rhodes? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Kaler? Present. Uh, we don't have anyone to do our invocation tonight, so I'm just going to um, ask everybody up here tonight at the podium to just say what they're thankful for this week. I know we all have something to be thankful for. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Change it up a little bit. That's fine. Want to start with you, Commissioner Abraham? Yes, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful. My daughter uh, was uh, sick, um, and she's like six hours away. So that's always tough. You know, she's got her first apartment, and you know, she had everything set, and she got sick, and she's better. She's a lot better now. I think the weather had something to do with that, I'm sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, she was a sick little girl, but she's she's good now. So, I'm definitely thankful for that. Mr. Gold? When you first said that, the most I've been very thankful today for some sunshine and a great, pretty day. It's really lifted a lot of people's spirits, I think. So. It has. Did he clear? I could start with a list. Hers is my job. Does that work? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a pretty that's, good one. <laughs> that's pretty smooth there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and just thankful that God's in my life and takes care of me every day and people that I'm around. I'm just very thankful to be here. Good. That's, that's good. Commissioner Wilson. I have had a lot of people tugging on me today about wanting information for this and information for that, and it makes it to be stressful, but I just realized I'm thankful that we have that many people interested in Paducah and what's going on here and wanting our city to be successful. So I should be thankful for that instead of uh, looking at it as, ah, <laughs> I don't have time for this. So very thankful for that. Commissioner Rhodes. Uh, I'm thankful for the Reading Pals program at McNabb School. Uh, <clears throat> it's, my, it's my every Tuesday date and uh, it's a good program. Thankful that my 19-year-old son, who's in college a thousand miles away, opted to spend spring break in Paducah. Oh, that's great. That's pretty good. And hopefully he'll get to stay. Maybe We'll be here this summer as well. Summer. Well, I'd just like to say that I'm thankful for wonderful young people in our community, like McCall, that's here tonight. And she's going to be doing our Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm glad to see young people like McCall um, step up and take a leadership role in Paducah and hope that you will always remain here and be one of our upstanding citizens and maybe a future leader of Paducah. So McCall, would you come up and help us with the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> City manager, any additions or deletions? Uh, we do have a deletion. I believe that uh, Commissioner Wilson is prepared to make a motion. Is this the appropriate time for that, Madam Clerk? No, it, we will wait till we get to it on the agenda. Okay, we, we, we will have one deletion. All right. We have John Hodges here tonight, and he's going to make a report on Wallace Park Project. Welcome, John, to the Joint taller. Sewer Agency. Uh, I came uh, to you guys, uh, I think it was in November, and gave a little bit of a detailed report on Wallace Park and where we are. Uh, I just wanted to come today and let you guys know we did uh, bid the, uh, the major portion of the work, which is uh, constructed in the subdivision. We opened bids. Uh, API uh, out of uh, Calvert City is a low bidder on the project, 3.8 million. It's a unit price contract, so it's a lot like I think what Rick talked about with the boat ramp. Uh, we have quantities from all different types of, uh, of materials when we go out there and do it. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to have, this is the real reason why I came, uh, we're going to have one more public meeting or informational meeting for the people that live out there to talk about the project, give them an opportunity to meet the contractor uh, and to meet us. Uh, we had decent attendance to the one that we had in, in November. 
Uh, we had no attendance on the previous ones. I think when you dig a huge hole, put a bunch of pipes in the ground, people start to start to show up. And we anticipate starting in April. Now we've got uh, loan dollars in it, KIA dollars, so they have to give us the authority to go. Uh, but I wanted you guys to know, uh, I haven't got my venue set on my meeting. I try to always get something really close to the project site. Uh, but I tentatively I'm going to try to have it on uh, March 20th uh, in the afternoon after everybody gets off work. So it's not all set in stone yet because I haven't been the, given the go ahead that I can have it the place that I want to have it yet but I wanted to come and let you guys know that's what that's what our plans are. So. And where will that work be? All in the Wallace Park? Yeah, yeah. What, what you'll see is uh, <clears throat> you'll have the, the contractor work in phases We'll be uh, right there at the intersection of Forest Circle and Lone Oak Road for some time. Uh, probably the first 30 days, I'd say, we'll, we'll be right there. We've got a big structure we've got to build. And it always takes a lot longer to get going. It's like trying to push this big ball, you know, and you, you, until you get it really going. You know, it's not real efficient. Um, and then it'll be, it's not like a highway job where you tear up all of the roadway at one time, you know, we kind of work in a place and we move along. So you'll have some residents that will be impacted for a while, and then the majority of the residents won't even know we're, we're there because we're nowhere near where their house is. And as we put in the main line, uh, after some time after the main line is built, we'll go in and start doing the individual yard work. So your average, I was telling the mayor before we start, the average homeowner is going to see us in their yard physically working maybe, you know, no more than a week, you know, out of the whole whole duration of the contract. Contract duration is 270 days. So we'll be out there for 270 days, but you may not see us on your block or your street for some time. And then of course, like every other construction project, you're gonna have mess and debris and, and all that stuff. It's gonna be, that's, that's how it is and that's how we've told them. Uh, and I think they're prepared for that. But then, you know, I mean, you can look around at some of the work that we've done. We always try to put Humpty Dumpty back together again after we're done tearing him up. So uh, that's what we're committed to doing. But it's going to be a very tough project. I'm not going to, anytime you do urban construction like that, 20 foot deep, it's not, not easy. That's just how it goes. But it's the EPA mandated deal we're working on. We don't, we don't have any choice. How did you choose that neighborhood? Well, that neighborhood actually, uh, from a technical standpoint, the neighborhood uh, is part of the combined sewer system. It's at the really the top of the hill of that area, and it regulates through two uh, two regulators uh, to go through an uh, outfall behind Granger, mm -hmm. um, Little Caesars Pizza, that area. So the thought part, we did Bridge Street last year, or actually in 2012, where you actually had a section of pipe that you knew you could, that you could separate. Much, pretty much the rest of the combined sewer system, you can't separate. It's too far intertwined, and there's no ditches. Name a ditch anywhere close to where we are here. There's no, there's no relief point, because they were all filled up, and houses are on top of them now. Mm -hmm. And so we have a relief point there at Wallace Park, where this relieves anyway. Most of our relief points are either Island Creek or they're down here at the Ohio River. And so you really, this will be the last separation project of any size we do. Where did all that water go before this? If it rained tonight, where would that water go right now? Go that ditch, that, that, that ditch at Granger, okay. behind Granger. The, the, what, we're, what we're taking out of that is the, is the sanitary portion. Okay. But the vast majority of that water goes there right now. How many miles of combined sewers do we have in the city? <laughs> there's two answers to that. There's, there's the legal answer, and then there's what, what, did, what did we do over the course of many years. If you go and actually look <clears throat> on the plat books from 1927, we have about 41 to 44 miles. But if you actually go out and look where every drainage problem was hooked into the sanitary system, we've got way more than that. In fact, if you look at the Wallace Park project, if you typically only went by what was labeled as a combined sewer, we'd be doing half the project we're doing. So what, what used to happen is the city only had one drainage system. So anytime anybody had a problem, you just piped it to that pipe. And so 
when we did our study, we went out and surveyed every house, went in every house that wasn't abandoned or whatever. So. Okay. Well, you all do a great job. You did a, a great job with that big project in the park area. So I know when it's over. It's going to be a tough project. I mean, I'm, I, I'm always blunt. You know that. I mean, that's the deal. But uh, it's a tough project. But but it has the overall, and that's what the board wants me to do, and I agree with that. You want to pick the work. We're doing the work that has the overall, and the end picture provides the better opportunity, the better situation for the residents of Paducah and McCracken County. And that's what we want to do. This job has, has the potential to give more benefit long-term to the residents there, along that area that have basement backups. Does the elevation help you? It's not as much elevation as you think. Really? It's an optical illusion. Okay. Because those pipes up on Wallace Park, mm -hmm. pipes that come down Lone Oak Road mm -hmm. are still in that same network and you can kind of get the feeling for, Okay. yeah. It's, we're not, we don't have near as much elevation as I'd love to have, but. That's one thing that City of Paducah did. The engineering department in 1920s, they knew what they were doing. Just wish they didn't do it so well. <laughs> That's when you could get in your time machine and go, hey, boys, let's not, let's don't fill that ditch up anyway. All right. Well, thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Abraham with the minutes. I move that the reading of the minutes for March 4th, 2014 City Commission meeting be waived and that the minutes of said meetings prepared by the city clerk be approved as written. Second. Everyone had a chance to look at those. Okay, city Clerk. Mr. Abraham. Aye. Mr. Gull. Aye. Mr. Rhodes. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Under motions, Commissioner Galt, please. I move that the following documents and bids be received and filed. Documents, Certificates of Liability Insurance, Circle P Enterprises LLC, MP Lawson Construction LLC, Wilkins Construction Company, Inc., Ray Black & Son, Inc., Agreements and Contracts, Grant agreement with the Office of Homeland Security for acceptance of the 2013 Homeland Security Grant Award for Police Department handheld radios. Hotel development agreement with Paducah Convention Hotel for con construction of a hotel in downtown Paducah. Mediation agreement with Aquatic Renovation Systems for the Noble Park Pool Rehabilitation Project. Change order number one with Aquatic Renovation Systems for Noble Park Pool Rehabilitation Project. Communication Systems agreement with Motorola Solutions for handheld radios for the Paducah Police Department. Cooperation agreement with the United States of America Department of the Army for rehabilitation of a federal flood control work agreement with the Federal Materials Company LLC for 2014-2015 concrete ready mix contract. Agreement with ICA Engineering Inc. for professional inspection services for the Greenway Trail Phase 2 project. Agreement with the professional firefighters of Paducah Local 168 International Association of Firefighters for fiscal year 2014 through 2017. Agreement with the Paducah Police Department Bargaining Unit for fiscal year 2014 through 2017. Paducah Waterworks Financial Highlights for January 2014. Paducah Housing Authority Report on Examination of Financial Statements and Supplemental Data for the year ended March 31, 2013. Bids for Engineering Public Works, Compost Grinding of Tree Debris and Yard Waste, Central Paving Company, AgriCycle Inc., Environmental Wood Recycling, bid rejected. Second. Okay. City Clerk. Mr. Abraham. Aye. Mr. Galt. Aye. Mr. Rhodes. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Under Municipal Orders, Commissioner Rhodes, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance providing providing for the gotta, I believe I'm out of I have no personal action. Okay, here. Just pass this to him. He can read this one. Sorry about that. Okay. Upon the recommendation of the city manager, the Board of Commissioners, and the City of Paducah under the order of personal changes on the attached list be approved. Second. Okay. We have a Chief Barnhill going to speak to that. Hi, right. uh, Chief. We have a resignation. We have a retirement. 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 Yes, ma'am. Officer uh, Mike Wentworth retired from us. Yes. Uh,
total of 20 years of service, uh, several years with us and several with the uh, County Sheriff's Department. And the only item on the personnel actions was a Ray resignation Collins. of an officer. Henry Collins. Yes, resignation. He went to Houston. Uh, he is still with us. Yeah, he's got a few more days. Okay. But that he has uh, tendered his his resignation. Moving on. Good guy. Officer. He was delivered Henry my Collins. packets on Friday night. So. Yes. Yes. Mr. Collins. Good. Good guy. All right. Hate to lose him. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Mr. Gall. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Commissioner Wilson, please. I move that a municipal order entitled a municipal order authorizing the mayor to execute an application and all documents necessary to obtain a 2014-2015 law enforcement service <coughs> fee grant in an amount up to $8,400 from the Kentucky Justice Cabinet for the Paducah Police Department to operate a one-year DUI enforcement program be adopted. Seconded. Chief. Mayor and Commissioners, again, this is a our annual award grant uh, that we go for $8,400 this year. No equipment match, no price match for the city. It's all overtime related. Okay, sounds good. Any discussion? City Clerk? Commissioner <coughs> Abraham? Aye. Mr. Galt? Aye. Mr. Rhodes? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaler? Aye. We'll go on to ordinances, adoptions. Uh, we've already talked about these, so we'll run through them pretty quickly. Commissioner Abraham, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a reimbursable grant agreement and all documents relating thereto with the United States Department of Justice for a Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant Program Award. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The mayor is hereby authorized to execute a reimbursable grant agreement and all documents relating thereto with the United States Department of Justice for a Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant Program Award in the amount of $7,435.61 for assistance with purchasing bulletproof vests to be used by the Paducah Police Department. Second. Okay. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Galt? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Taylor? Aye. Commissioner Galt, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled, An Ordinance Authorizing and Directing the Mayor to Execute Change Order No. 1 with Jim Smith Contracting Company, LLC, for the Ohio Riverboat Launch Project. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The mayor is hereby authorized and directed to execute change order number one for a contract increase in the amount of $17,139.83 for the City of Paducah's Ohio River Boat Launch Project, increasing the total contract amount to $2,605,605.61. Second. City Clerk. Mr. Abraham. Aye. Mr. Galt. Aye. Mr. Rhodes. No. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaler? Aye. Commissioner Rose, please. Okay, now we got it. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance in title, an ordinance providing for the closing of a portion of Ridgewood Street between Topeka Avenue and Olympia Avenue and authorizing the mayor to execute all documents relating to same. This ordinance is summarized as follows, that the City of Paducah hereby authorizes the closing of a portion of Ridgewood Street between Topeka Avenue and Olympia Avenue and authorizes the mayor to execute all documents necessary to complete the transfer of property to the property owners in or abutting the public ways to be closed. Second. Mayor, uh, <clears throat> Mayor Commission, uh, we introduced this ordinance uh, a couple of weeks ago and during our review, uh, further review of this to prepare the documents for um, the properties there, that orange triangle you see there is actually a piece of property that was believed to be owned by this property owner. When they bought the property in 2000, they believed they bought the entire track. Whereas <clears throat> the uh, title work that was done, I'm sorry, I got to little technical difficulty here. Where, where's, I, I do that. I don't know why it's moved. 
I, I won't touch him anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, that rectangle to the north of the uh, orange triangle was believed, uh, that, that property owner believed to own all of the property there. And then in our research, before we could uh, give that half of the property there, you'll see the hatched area. I believe it's labeled as E. Uh, that's the property that goes to the adjacent property owner. Well, we were intending on giving it to the people who believed to own it, and we realized that the deed that's referenced there describes the rectangle without the triangle. So we've contacted the uh, uh, developer who is pursuing this, as well as uh, uh, his surveyor, and said, you've got a little bit of work to do here because uh, the property is going to go to an unknown property owner right now. So we're doing that. We're having them do that research. This is just uh, error. Uh, and the professional uh, representation of that property of which my staff uh, found this week and we want to make sure that we didn't co compound the error any further. So that's that's why that's being, I guess, recommended to table or whatever is before you today. Commissioner Wilson has the motion to table that. Commissioner Wilson, you have that motion. <clears throat> I move that the ordinance introduced on February 25th, 2014, entitled An Ordinance Providing for the Closing of a Portion of Ridgewood Street between Topeka Avenue and Olympia Avenue and authorizing the mayor to execute all documents relating to same be tabled. Second. How long will this, can I ask a question now? Sure. So how long do you expect this to take? <clears throat> well, um, the property owner uh, that's believed to have owned the orange triangle that does not, we've contacted them today, uh, and then this is going to be their option because they were working with the adjacent developer in, in the closure of this because they actually signed this plat believing that they were going to receive property of which the developer was going to buy back that half from them. So uh, with these complications, I'm sure that um, – when he bought the property, he's probably going to go see his title attorney uh, for that. He's probably going to go see his surveyor for that because I'm sure that they're going to say, well, I've got a deed and the surveyor found a deed and the title work that's done on the deed does not represent the property that I think I own. So I don't know what the time frame would be on that because those are solutions that have to be I guess resolved outside of us and then in, until it's recorded in the courthouse we can't move forward with this project so it wasn't anything on on the city's part absolutely not okay this was other landowners issues with other landowners that came up well actually actually this is one of those undeveloped right-of-ways uh, that I've, I've spoke about I mean when you look at that we can't physically build a road in this right-of-way this was actually annexed in 76 so it's vacant land that could be put to good use if it was taken out of the public's interest. And so going through that process, this was discovered. Basically, it's woods back there right now until somebody decided to use it. But then when you're going to start, uh, I guess, disposing of public property, going through the process, expose this. With the uncertainties on this thing, it's fair to say that it's tabled indefinitely until the information Correct. is in order to move forward. Right. Thank you, Rick. Can we call the roll? Yes. Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Galt? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaylee? Aye. Commissioner Abraham, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled <clears throat> an ordinance providing for the closing of a portion of a 15-foot alley from Bethel Street toward Main Street and authorizing the mayor to execute all documents relating thereto, relating to the same. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The city of Paducah does hereby authorize the closing of a portion of an alley from Bethel Street toward Main Street and authorizes, empowers, and directs the mayor to execute a quick claim deed from the city to the property owners in or abutting the public ways to be closed. Second. Clerk, 
Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Galt? Aye. Commissioner Roth? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaler? Aye. Ordinances introduction. Commissioner Galt, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled, An Ordinance Accepting the Bid of Central Paving Company for Compost Grinding of Tree, Debris, and Yard Waste, and authorizing the Mayor to execute a contract for same. This ordinance is summarized as follows, that the City accepts the bid of Central Paving Company for compost grinding of tree debris and yard waste in the amount of $524 per hour for the remaining portion of the 214 calendar year and with the op three optional one-year term renewals and authorizes the mayor to execute a contract for same. Second. Mayor Commission, this is uh, a long-term contract that is uh, usual and customary for the city of Paducah uh, ever since it's had its grinding, or excuse me, its compost yard. You recall that I, I brought in some compost in, some <laughs> large compost and some small compost, and it had somewhat of an odor to it, but it's, it's also what we call the smell of money. Uh, the basic product for compost is the wood chips. You'll see the bulk wood chips being, uh, being brought in around, and then we have to grind it to fit through a three inch screen. Uh, and it's that process that is the initial process before it's mixed with the bioactivated sludge that makes the compost, so. All right, question. In August we bought, this is a great job. You learn about a lot of things. I never knew what a trauma machine was, but we bought <coughs> one in August for 172,000 bucks. Explain how this all works together. The compost that we're gonna go outside to get and the trial okay. machine we bought. Okay, uh, raw organic material is brought to us uh, with, you know, and, and it's normally a brush. Uh, that's the base product. And then we take uh, the uh, bioactivated sludge that comes off of the treatment plant. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes into a, I guess, a, a storage area. And we create a windrow a windrow of uh, wood chips. We put the bioactivated sludge in the top, and then we have this huge, uh, um, I guess, tiller, you would refer to it, that mixes everything together. And it, it cooks for about 35 to 40 days, core temperatures up around 145 degrees, and stays there to kill all of the, I guess, uh, uh, bacteria and everything that might be there. Uh, then we move it over into a stockpile area, and then it's a real coarse material. And that coarse black material I brought up here for your uh, inspection so you could see the difference. And then we put it through this trommel screen, which is uh, nothing more than a horizontal tube that has a fine screen that you load the uh, process material into the top of it. And as this uh, conveyor carries it through the screen, it's tumbling it much like a just a huge uh, clothes dryer, but it's it's falling through the uh, the smaller particles are are smaller are falling through, larger particles are separated. The smaller portion of it is much like what you would buy composted soil and you know like soil at Walmart. When you come and you open it up, that fine soil you get at Walmart is basically what we're producing in compost. So the trommel machine does not actually do the grinding and all that. No, it actually it actually refines the Separate. material. It refines the material that's more, I would say, user friendly or garden friendly because you don't have wood wood chips um, about half the size of this. You know, in your in your garden, you've you've got things that are real fine. It fits through a half inch screen. What we're doing tonight is approving the front end of the process, right. which is the grinding of the limbs and mm -hmm. branches into the wood chips, essentially. Right. Right. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Rick. And we don't vote on these tonight, so we'll move on to Commissioner Rhodes. Uh, I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled an ordinance authorizing the finance director to pay L3 Communications Mobile Vision for the sole source purchasing of digital in-car cameras and a new server with required software installation to be used by the Paducah Police Department and authorizing the mayor to execute all documents relating to same. This ordinance is summarized as follows. That the city of Paducah hereby authorizes the finance director to make payments to L3 Communications Mobile Vision in the amount of $25,223 for the purchase of two digital in car cameras, a new server, software, and installation to be used by Paducah Police Department and authorizes the mayor to execute all documents relating to same. Second. 
So the LVHS system is a dinosaur. They're a dinosaur, yes. They are, they are long gone. Mayor Commission, as you know, uh, we've transitioned over everything over to a digital system over the last several years. The cars actually pull up to the police department when they get in within range of the antennas on the side of the building, they transfer automatically uh, without having to pull the old VHS tapes, uh, the CDs, the SIM cards, any of that stuff anymore. Uh, but what has happened over time is the server that houses all that data on the inside of the police department has, uh, it's seven years old now. It's actually two years out of warranty. So that's what we're uh, asking to get replaced tonight uh, is the server portion and then in addition to that, buy two more cameras for the cars. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Wilson, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled, an ordinance authorizing and approving the acquisition of real property located at 5455 Commerce Drive, Paducah, McCracken County, Kentucky, an assumption of the lease agreement with Maco Organics Corporation for the improvement of a public project. This ordinance is summarized as follows. In this ordinance, the City of Paducah approves the acquisition of an undivided one-half interest in the real property located at 5455 Commerce Drive, Paducah, Kentucky, and the assumption of the lease obligations of Paducah, McCracken County Industrial Development Authority under the lease agreement dated May 31, 2013 with Maco Organics Corporation. This ordinance further authorizes the Mayor of the City of Paducah, Kentucky to execute a general warranty deed and assignment agreement to accomplish and consummate the acquisition of the property. Seconded. Any discussion? Commissioner Abraham, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the City of Paducah, Kentucky, approving and authorizing the execution of an interlocal cooperative agreement among the City of Paducah, Kentucky, the County of McCracken, Kentucky, and GPEDC Incorporated. This ordinance is summarized as follows. This ordinance authorizes the City of Paducah, Kentucky, to approve and enter into an interlocal cooperation cooperative agreement between the city of Paducah, Kentucky and McCracken and the county of McCracken, Kentucky and GPEDC Incorporated pursuant to section 65.210 to 65.300 inclusive of the Kentucky Revised Statute as amended in as, as amended the Interlocal Act the ordinance approves the form of the interlocal cooperative agreement presented to the Board of Commissioners of the city, which with such changes therein and shall not be adverse to the city and may be approved by the mayor. Then the local cooperative agreement sets forth the common plan of construction that the city of Paducah County of McCracken County and GPEDC Inc. will follow together to undertake the construction of project improvements to the building and the site situated at 5455 Commerce Drive, Paducah, McCracken County, Kentucky, in the most cost-effective manner pursuant to the agreement and the Interlocal Act for a rental arrangement with MECO Corporation. Second. I guess I'd like to comment a little bit on this. It's been almost a year ago that uh, the community celebrated the uh, announcement that MACO uh, was coming uh, to town into the Commerce Park uh, to occupy the uh, former spec building that I believe had been uh, idle for seven or eight years since it was actually uh, originally constructed. Um, so subsequent to that, uh, we are pleased to be entering into the uh, construction phase. That building was essentially a shell, so it needs to be built out. Uh, MACO uh, itself uh, commissioned the design and is paying for it, and the design will be uh, brought forward, and there will be a competitive bid process to procure a construction contractor. The essence of the interlocal agreement is that the city, the county, and GPDC have come together to designate the process that will be used to administer that. Uh, GPEDC or PED, excuse me, has uh, uh, elected to uh, 
serve as the project manager. So not too much unlike the Teletech building process, we will establish a common uh, uh, repository for the funds to come together and PED will manage the process of, of uh, uh, essentially managing the contract once it is let. Um, to refresh your memory, both the city and the county are contributing $1.5 million into the construction fund. Any construction costs exceeding that and, and there uh, is a uh, awareness that there will be uh, an exceedance of that will be the responsibility of the corporation itself. In fact, I believe that uh, MACO intends to expand upon the footprint of the building uh, from the onset. So um, that will be the process. We will um, be given the opportunity to review uh, claims before they're paid, but the City Commission will not actually take action to execute the payment. It is written in the agreement that uh, PED will furnish a financial uh, accounting for the project once the project is completed. So I think uh, it's a good arrangement. All the controls that we need uh, are in there. So uh, I'm excited, as I'm sure you all are, that we're at the point of uh, ready to go with that, and we look forward to the work being done and, and uh, the, the company uh, starting up operations. Actually, Jeff, it's $1.25 million. What did I right? say? $1.25 million apiece. Did I say something else? I'm sorry. <laughs> I think said 1.5. Okay. 1.25. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's actually not the Commerce Park either. It's on Commerce Drive, but it's Commerce in Drive. the 24, uh, 24 Logistics Park. Okay. Those people don't get just to get not to get confused. I, I hope I didn't make more errors than the two that were caught, but uh, I think I think it was accurate way. from there. Good job, but just to get it all correct. All right. Did you have a report tonight, City Manager? Oh, I want to mention a couple things. Um, word came out late today that the local option tax bill that would essentially. Uh, put on the uh, state ballot a constitutional amendment to approve local option sales tax passed out of House Committee today on a 6 to 3 vote and will hit the floor uh, in the near future uh, and then go to the other chamber and we'll see what happens uh, from there. Uh, I think you're all aware that the, the bill that would consolidate the number of classes of cities uh, passed the House last week uh, essentially would change from a four or five class system to a two class system, Paducah and all but the first class cities at present would fall into what's called a home rule class. And that is merely a uh, uh, changing of the landscape, if you will, to set the stage for uh, efforts that will take place in subsequent legislative session sessions to uh, do away with a lot of the distinctions that exist between uh, the classes of cities right now. The one that stands out the most and perhaps is one of the most onerous in our opinion is the ability of uh, what fourth class cities to have a restaurant tax uh, while second class cities such as ourselves don't have that flexibility right now. So that would be one example of something that is on the uh, radar screen to pursue in subsequent legislative sessions but it was believed that um, this change was necessary to, to set the uh, groundwork for those efforts in future sessions. Uh, budget preparation uh, is underway in earnest. Uh, department directors will soon be receiving their instructions and forms for budget preparation. On the operational side of the budget, we're anticipating some growth in revenue uh, badly needed. Uh, at best, it will help us sustain current operational levels. So. Uh, there will be some decision making at the administrative level on the allocation of, of some of the uh, limited revenue growth. As far as the investment fund, I think as in past years, at least while I've been here, that will be the one I think that will garner the most attention and, and necessitate, I think, uh, the most uh, uh, intense decision making at the city commission level. Our projections um, are similar to past years and that are uh, needs and wants exceed what our resources are, so there'll need to be some prioritization of, of the expenditure of the investment fund dollars going forward. We will have a pre-budget workshop again uh, in a few weeks like we do every year to give you that uh, projection looking forward and share with you what we think some of the major decision points will need to be in the budget process. Lastly, uh, next uh, Tuesday we have a uh, commission workshop scheduled and we will barbecue in the river 
uh, Inc. will be making a presentation to the City Commission that evening. And that's all I have. Any commissioners' comments tonight? Anyone? Yeah, I do. Um, I uh, was talking to a, a gentleman today, and he was asking me about the uh, um, the newspaper articles about the barbecue on the river, Paducah Symphony Orchestra, and um, and asked me what what I thought about it, and and I hadn't really chimed in on it. I was just kind of thinking it, and then this afternoon. A couple of things occurred to me. One, I had personal experience with. The other, um, the event itself is a perfect storm of goodwill. I really believe that. Um, you have agencies that depend on that event uh, to help them throughout the year. Um, different agencies have different needs, but they're all significant. Um, I don't think there's one agency down there any more significant than the other. Um, uh, People come and they support their agency. They go, they'll have their whole family going, standing in one because that's their agency. And I think that's why that uh, that event has grown so much that the city, I mean, the, the numbers keeps growing. Um, however, uh, I remember back in 1996, I was uh, director of Vision Inner City Paducah. And we had a, um, a group that said, look, we want to, we want to, raise money for you guys uh, down here at the barbecue. I was like, great. So, um, so what do I need to do? It's like, no, you just, we got you. I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking, this is great. So I put on a VIP T-shirt. I'm thinking if you're going to raise money for me, I'm going to be down there. Hey, it's going over here, you know. Um, for three days, two days, uh, he had these, uh, these inflatables. And these kids love these inflatables. They get in and jump around. It's like, it's charging like five bucks a kid. So it's two days. So, you know, with a street ministry, you always got, you're always cash strapped. I mean, there's things going on all the time, totally depending on donations. Well, when, when it came time to, uh, uh, to show his support, he gave me three $50 bills. And I remember thinking to myself, This is not the only person down here doing that. So what I what I would like to see uh, is that a minimal, after all your bills are paid, your net, whatever that is, that the charities that's represented, which is the reason for the whole event anyway, nothing less than 20% goes to the charity. So that is a is something that I don't think has has happened. I think it should because it helps. It helps do exactly what the festival is supposed to do. Um, you're going to have personalities. Anything this this successful, um, you're going to have those turbulence. Uh, personalities are what they are. But let's just keep in mind what the event is for, and how many people uh, depend on that. And the reason folks come is because of of the catalyst of the event at the beginning. So uh, we can work this stuff out, but it's a great event, and uh, it's going to get better. You, you want mean, me to? I mean, I, I, I'm hesitant how to. Would you, um, uh, how would you? How would you know that they're giving twenty percent? I mean, what kind of checks and balances are there? Uh, Commissioner Abraham raises a good point. It's not something that the board and several committees haven't discussed before, because uh, you're exactly right. For instance, there and there, right off the top of my head, I can tell you that there are three different groups all purchase the same amount of meat, and one gives sixteen thousand, another gives eight thousand, and another gives right in between. The two numbers and they all purchase the same amount of meat so we know right. that there's a difference money's going different places so we've had that conversation multiple times that was one reason that the accountability form signed by the charity and also signed by the team was put into place so you have both both sides reporting a another reason that they're reported publicly how much the charity is mm -hmm. raised 
But having that conversation with the accounting office and CPAs, they all say it's very difficult to require. I mean, you can require a certain amount, obviously. Right. But how you're ever going to ensure that without requiring audits, which are very costly and would probably deter people from participating, it, it's you just have to have some trust-based that, – that, that's what we get into. Not yeah. that that's not a great idea no, to require no. a certain amount, but they all say, well, you can – how are you going to do that? Well, that's uh, – that's that's something that uh, uh, we do the best we can, and we to ensure that those agencies are are most first and foremost been taken care of. But I might add, though, there are other there are other um, uh, cookers that's cooking that totally is at the other extreme of of the of the line, where they'll give eighty percent to the uh, non for profit. And, and keep 20. There's plenty of guys, there's plenty of, of folks like that also. So, uh, but that was, that was something that I personally experienced. And um, uh, as we, as the management of barbecue go through and look at what, what's going on and adjustments to be made, uh, we look at that. House Bill 531, I believe I've got that House Bill right. I think I emailed all of you all. At the Home Rule? No, no, the 911. 391. Mm. House Bill 391, I think. 391. I believe it's 391. Okay. Anyway, I emailed it to you uh, to please call your state representatives and say that, you know, we, we need to support that because uh, that puts an additional 30 cents, I think, on... <clears throat> It was 70%, 70 percent, 70 cents on a dollar for cell phones, and they're proposing a dollar because 80 percent of the 911 calls today are made from cell phones, hey. and fewer and fewer people have landlines in their homes. So it's only fair that the cell phone users pay the the majority of that. And and 911, I mean, we have trouble funding. Uh, absolutely. 911 it's such an important thing for our community when I first um, when I first uh, was elected back in 2000 I was on the 911 board and that trend that started um, the reports we'd get in meetings that you know more and more calls are coming from cell phones and there wasn't any revenue mm -hmm. coming from that and so that and that was over 10 years ago so I mean most folks now you know, they don't have landlines, so. It's House Bill 391. Okay. Yeah, I just looked. I, yeah. Thank it you. Is. I mean, is it going to have rough sledding? Yeah, there's, yeah. They, they need everyone to call in, KLC. Who's, who's against it? Any, any particular group? Uh, well, it, it's. Yeah, there are always, I mean, there's any, always somebody Any fee something. increase <laughs> is likened to a tax. <laughs> yeah. just, Ouch. A lot of people look at it as. It's a fee increase, but they look at it as a Out. tax increase. But it's a user fee, actually. Yeah, and, and Mayor, you might want to make the point that they need to call, right. not email, because right. they don't. A lot of people still think if you email that. Okay, we got actually we and I don't have that 800 number. Do you have that, you Sandra? Okay. It says we need to light up the message line by calling 502-564-8100 let your legislators know you support House Bill 391 and the needed funding for the 911 reform. The, the 800 number mm -hmm. is 800-372-7181. Yeah. All right. Uh, public I'll leave a message on that one mm -hmm. and they'll give it to them. Public comments. We have Ronald Ward here tonight. Is that the right number? Yes. Ronald lives on Clarks River Road. A situation that you may know a little bit about, but it's a situation affecting everybody in the city of Purdue, Penal I'm sure in city government, is the spiraling electric rates over that Purdue power. Okay. Yeah. And there hasn't been much in the media or anything about this, but I've been doing a bunch of research. And as a result of that, 
we have ended up with the highest utility rates in the state of Kentucky. Okay, this is, I made up a chart here with the outlying cities and what, and the kilowatt rate and what 2,000 watts and what, kilowatts and what. Well, that's not much usage in hot weather or cold weather, 2,000 kilowatts, I'm sure if you look at your bill. So like Saxton, which is a municipal power plant, they own their own generating plant there in downtown Saxton, like 2,000 kilowatts there would be $100.40. Owensboro owns their own plant, 132. Uh, going on Murray, which is a municipal utility, $150.08. They buy from TVA, which Paducah Power used to, so they went into the uh, Prairie State deal. And you go on and on, Louisville, 172, they're on the receipt there, Hopkinsville, 201, and uh, Mayfield Electric, they're another municipal deal, 205, 63 totals for 2,000 kilowatts. Even Jackson Purchase, which was in the news a lot about the uh, big river deal, uh, when their big like 20% rate increase for 2,000 kilowatts, so that only puts them at 242.86 a month. Okay. And you go to Princeton, there's only two co power companies in Kentucky brought into the Prairie State deal. Princeton and Paducah bought seven, eight point five percent of it. But Paducah Power has twenty two thousand five hundred customers. Princeton only has like three or four thousand. So they own a minor which they have borrowed a bunch of money to buy into that, and I'll explain that in a minute. And even Princeton, which has had to have a rate increase because they're into it. And they have to go they have to buy their power now from that prairie state which has had all kinds of problems. It started out with a $2.9 billion cost. Ended up with a cost overruns over $5 billion. And they've had Unit 1 and Unit 2, uh, they are having to still make their payments on them, buy electricity from them. But Unit 2 is like only running to 65% capacity. And their Peabody Coal owns the coal. And it's come to find out that the coal is not as good a grade is they fall, so they're having to burn more of the coal, reduce utilities, and it's high sulfur coal. In fact, in the, when that started, there were like 160 coal plants proposed in, the, in this country. That was the only one built. So Peabody Coal came up with the idea they couldn't get the financing to get all these utilities to sign on, mainly municipal, because they're up in Illinois, Kirksville, Missouri, they put the Illinois, but take the Illinois. If in particular, they really covered it in those areas. The St. Louis Post is back, the Chicago Tribune, and it's been in the news all the time. So that, so Paducah, right now, if you use 2,000 kilowatts, would be $367.13. That's not including the fact that they're having a, they're going to go up 5% April the 1st, or maybe more. So that would put them at 385. Now, part of that says they just added that surcharge, 3.496, which they say will go for several months. But they have been misleading the city of Paducah and all the residents for, with their newsletters, and they're very tight-lipped. They don't never put out nothing, really. Uh, you, have to go, you have to do all this research to find out this stuff. And that uh, they say even November, the new November newsletter that comes to your bill, they say, well, it's under control, the situation. Now, here it is, March, they've added the surcharge, which might go for several months. In fact, there's been some independent reports on the Prairie State situation that the rates may be keep going up. There'll never be a break. They keep saying, we're going to get it under control, but they're saying they may never, it may go to 2024. So, as you can see, that's the highest rate in the state of Kentucky. Sir, can I ask you how you did the research to prove this? On the internet, all uh, utility companies' rates are public record on the internet. They're all filed. They're, they're all current. They were all done over the weekend. They're so how did you calculate this? I took uh, the every monthly service charge. Everybody has a monthly service charge. Like a Paducah's is fourteen seventy five. Most of them are in the range of fourteen. Then 
multiply, this was an average use is 2,000 kilowatts, which that's not a whole lot of kilowatts in the hot weather or cold weather, maybe in the, your mild months, maybe. And so I multiplied, added the, multiplied the 2,000 watts times the kilowatt rate, then added the monthly base charge, that's where I come up with the calculations, and they are current. And then I'll finish up here. And one reason why they're having to raise the rate so much is I've done some research on their bonds, okay? Uh, which is, uh, you gotta know where to look, so I've got a background in that. Uh, they, I looked on uh, Moody's, and I think it is Finch, which rates bonds. Well, basically for 2010, when they started buying bonds for that generating plant out there, which are been in articles in the producer paper, it basically sits vacant, that natural gas laying out there. And then buying into the Prairie State, which they formed a place called Kentucky Municipal Power Agency, and issued bonds. So this is on one of the bond rating companies. They presently have a debt, which is unheard of in the municipal power industry. They have 22,500 customers. They have a debt of $30,000 per customer, which ends up to a grand total of they owe $675 million. Nobody knows. I don't think about I didn't know it. I couldn't believe it. Which it started in 2012. That's when the rates started going up. Uh, they're, and that's going to keep going up too. They've got a $12 million a year debt service. They issued $370 million bonds in 2013 through the Kentucky Municipal Power Agency bonds, that thing they formed. And they came in at 6.02 interest, which is extremely high for uh, municipal power bonds because municipal powers are usually some of the lowest priced bonds there is. And then in 2010, they issued 170 million bonds of Paducah Power bonds. And then the reason why the ratings are so high, they, they started out with a real good rating. They were on A negative, which that means their credit watch, which they did upgrade them back to regular A. But I mean, it's just, it's just public knowledge for a problem that's facing everybody in Paducah is these exorbitant interest rates, and yet y'all don't have any control over them because I think all you do is just support the members of the board, don't you? Mm -hmm. Y'all be up in the jail. Mm -hmm. And unlike some states, there's no control over municipal utilities in Kentucky. So basically, I'm just here, I'm in the process of contacting some media and some other things, uh, let y'all know what's going on. We, we really appreciate you yeah. coming. And uh, do you have any solutions? I don't have a solution. I don't know what there is a solution. Other than, and well, not only the attorney general is suing in their behalf, <laughs> but really there is no solution because some of the utilities, lots of utilities are hurt. Illinois, Ohio. Sorry. Uh, they have tried to sell their interest in this thing. There's no buyers. They are stuck under these like 20, I think a 25 year long term contract. And I mean, from what I'm reading, you know, if, if you go look at those rates, I mean, those are just outrageous <laughs> compared to the rest of the state. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know a solution. <laughs> thank, thank you. I mean, so I just thought I'd uh, vent my feelings toward them. <laughs> I just want to make one comment, and I appreciate the gentleman's research, but the reason he was able to find all that is because, in fact, that is all public information that is attainable uh, on a number of places, including uh, Paducah Power Office, and right. all of all of that activity has transpired before the board in called public meetings. Uh, so without commenting on the... Um, uh, the rate issue, I will if you want me to, but I think it's a credit to the fact that Paducah Power is a public utility, that all that information is out there publicly accessible and before the public. That's one of the reasons why we own our own electric utility is so that the public um, has uh, access to that information and a voice in it if they choose to. Um, 
Okay. I would like to know if that if his statistics are really true because I know when we're out recruiting businesses, we frequently say we have very low power rates, and that's we use that to our advantage when we're recruiting companies to come here. So, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what your background is on that to have that info, to research that as the as you know to state that, but I do know that we try to use our power rates to our advantage when we're recruiting companies. Uh, let me just make make a couple more comments, if I might, and, and it's well that you mentioned that. I appreciate you bringing that up, that it's because of our investment in, in that big power supply that we're able to offer an industrial incentive rate. In other words, entice people to use that electricity. That'll help not only the incoming or expanding business and industry, but also all the customers of Paducah Power. Um, Prairie States is a long-term investment. It's big business. It's volatile business. Uh, I, uh, I'm on the Paducah Power Board, and we had a presentation yesterday by our consultant, and I think the most salient thing that came out of that, and I intend to um, share this with the commission and encourage Paducah Power to share it with the whole customer base, but there was a, a dual trend line that showed the projected um, cost of, of the rates for Paducah Power, if you will, over the next while, and let's set aside for now the, uh, call it a surcharge. The only thing I'm going to uh, take exception to in your remarks is, uh, I think, the suggestion that that power cost adjustment was going to go on for several months. It is in effect for a quarter, and we're in the second month of that quarter. It will be reviewed at that time, and our hope and expectation is that it will be able to go down and continue to go down uh, subsequently. And you're also correct in that that surcharge is associated with the fact that the production plant is not yet operating at peak efficiency. It is still in what we call a shakedown phase. It is an extremely huge and complex project, and it, it takes a while for that to happen. If it is, I would, again, this, this may ring a little hollow because it's, it's not tomorrow, it's today. <laughs> but our belief is that tomorrow, if that's two years, five years, 20 years from now, our rates comparatively are going to be very favorable. Most utilities in Kentucky are, in fact, on TVA-based uh, power uh, supplies. Our trend line shows an increasing gap between ourselves and TVA going forward in our favor. If that happens, at least for the sake of the comparison, we are going to start looking pretty darn good by comparison. And again, Prairie States is a key component of that. And part of the reason for that is the fact that the coal supply is there. It's underground. There's a 30-year supply. Coal is a very significant component of the cost of coal-generated electricity. It's not going to change over that 30-year period of time. We are in a very unique situation in that regard. While I wasn't here when that decision was made, I think that was a very key uh, component of the decision-making process is that the ability to site a plant there brought with it a long-term coal supply and made us not only not dependent on TVA but not dependent on uh, the coal mines or the, the railroads for the transportation of the coal. Well, I'll just say I have not done the, the research that obviously you have here, but I will still continue to say that when we are recruiting companies, we we talk about our low power cost in this area as to our advantage. And I would want to make sure that we keep that message strong and say and continue to say that. I mean, if that's the, the truth, and I'm, I feel sure we have the research to show that. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>